Hi everyone and welcome back to Splash Page. I'm Sean and as always I'm joined by Andrew and today we're going to talk about the new episode of Why the Last Man. It's episode 6 of the first season called Weird Al is Dead. First of all, absolute credit for the writers for the name of this episode because this might be my favorite so far. (laughs) No, it's a good one. And there is that uh, line in the books where they're talking about how Yes, everyone's dead, but we didn't realize that this one specifically, but so yeah, it takes it on a personal level, I guess. Yeah, love it. Uh, So this episode, we have kind of two storylines that we want to go through. The first is Yorick through 55 and Dr. Man, as well as its kind of connections to what's going on in the Pentagon. And then the second storyline um, is Nora, Sam, and Hero, who are now with, who we have confirmed are the daughters of the Amazon. Yes, sir. Um, which are a, a prevalent group in the very beginning of the comic, so it's great that we're seeing them now and that they're clearly going down that path. Uh, but let's start with Yorick. Yeah, I mean, this this basically starts off with Yorick. This is one of the smallest Yorick storylines in the show so far, right? They really don't take up a ton of screen time with Yorick and 355 here. Yeah, I think there was uh, maybe episode two or three when they really focused heavily on Hero. But um, yeah, I want to say that it's probably 10 minutes, 15 minutes tops that yeah. focus kind of on the the Yorick and 355 story. Although there is a ton of action. So yeah. Um, it starts with Yorick um, kind of away from Dr. Man and 355, and he stumbles upon a group that are kind of doing a candlelight visual. Uh, while a radio head. <laughs> well, yeah, radio head candlelight visual. Yeah, well, they have their like little uh, chorus singing Karma Police by Radiohead. Yeah. Uh, which I, I love. I love Radiohead, so happy that that was in there. I'm going to be honest, that uh, whole scene, I was getting a little emotional. It was kind of really, really nice. Yeah, I kind of got goosebumps too. And yeah. I think, again, it was the combination of kind of the singing and, and just the way they set it up. Um, but they don't let you kind of linger there for long. Uh, while Yorick is able to take his gas mask and hood off due to uh, people assuming that he's transgendered, um, we see an operative uh, from the government looking for 355. They actually have a picture of her as well. Mm -hmm. And she's able to track them to that candlelight vigil. Um, But 355 outsmarts her and they're able to kind of retreat to uh, an old church and kind of bunker down there and come up with a plan. Yeah, there is uh, that moment where Yorick asks, why would the military be looking for you? And 355 turns into Spider from Goodfellas. I, no, I thought you said that she's like she can't keep her lies straight. Yeah, uh, it's a weird one, too, because we also get the sense that um, in the last episode, or maybe it was two ago, that Jennifer Brown was going to be looking for 355 and that she was really like, who the hell is this woman? Right. But now we know that it's actually Regina Oliver is actually involved with the military and she is aware that they are looking for 355. Right. So the idea being that after tracking the helicopters and finding out who flew the helicopter, it's a larger search now. And... Obviously, this puts Jennifer Brown in a really bad spot because she now does not want 355 to be (laughs) found. Even though last episode, we assumed that she was going to be the one looking for her. Yeah. Um, So it's a little confusing. It it, it caught me off guard at first, but uh, I think it makes more sense this way. Yeah, it upped the stakes on the whole search for 355 and uh, that whole moment of should we go after the people in the forest, woods, I don't know, jungle, the people in the jungle. Yeah, uh, anything but jungle would have worked. <laughs> well, she she wants to go after them, but she doesn't want to do it in front of Regina Oliver. So now, but luckily, as they were escaping, 355 was able to take everyone out and definitely not try to kill them all. Yeah, I love the whole like. Um, you know, someone's like walking in the woods and they get grabbed from behind and they get pulled back. Mm-hmm. It's like, come on, man. Like it's, very it's, it's the most like cliche. Yeah. <laughs> She's able to navigate the, the wilderness and, and take out the foes. Yeah. But well, uh, we o- do have an interest. Yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, we do have an interesting moment um, where one of the tactical uh, 
one of the tactical force see Yorick. Um, Yorick kind of does a little disappearing act yeah. as the woman turns around after she hears an explosion. But again, it's one of those things where Yorick is able to kind of walk around maskless in certain environments and others, it seems that it's like instantly recognizable that he is a, uh, you know, Y chromosome carrying man. Yeah. And it, it just, it's very hit or miss as to why it's okay in some cir- circumstances and su- not okay in others. So it, you never really know when he's in trouble or not. Um, as opposed to if, I don't know. It could be mostly, it could be mostly because uh, when it seems like he's in danger, it's military people that might recognize the president's son, even though she wasn't the president at the time they were in the military, but he might be a recognizable face to people that were in the service. I guess so. Yeah. Maybe. That that kind of adds a little element. Well, the only to... reason they were even in the forest woods over there was because of that whole uh, breakdown where Yorick was, where 355 was yelling at Yorick and Man, and they decided to kind of jet off on their own, maybe leave mm-hmm. her behind. She's kind of not, not the person they want to travel with, maybe. Which actually makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Uh, the 355 character has been all over the place. Mm-hmm. Um I, I do like that we got the call back to the sleepwalking from episode yeah. two or three, I believe, and maybe we'll get more about that dream. But the 355 character isn't really a leader in this group as much as she's just kind of this shady ass force that is doing things <laughs> that both Dr. Mann and Yorick assume are terrible, uh, and yeah. kind of rightfully so. So well, Dr. Man really I would nails as it. Well. Dr. Man nails it when she says she's just making this up as she's going along. She's just doing things. It doesn't seem like she has a plan in mind for how this is going to work out. Yeah, yeah. But, you know, w- once 355 and York and actually Dr. Man take out the tactical force sent by the government, who is highly trained, um, they all kind of not necessarily... Uh, super friendly, but they all decide to kind of continue on together. Mm-hmm. So at least we know that they're continuing to travel west yeah. because we were told that they were kind of in the Pennsylvania wilderness. Um, and they will be so, safe because they're going to burn that other woman's shoes. Yeah. You know, like a, well, like a guess, cartoon would do. <laughs> yeah. Well, you don't want to walk around barefoot yeah, in yeah. the woods. Come exactly. On. No, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, and that's really the, the crux of the York story. Is there anything... We miss before we want to jump over to Hero and the crazy cultness that's going on. I think that's it. Let's do it. So now we're jumping over to the other story that's happening in episode six. Uh, Hero, Sam, and Nora, who have now been kind of sheltered by the daughters of the Amazon. The reason why we know that that is actually the case, that they are the daughters of the Amazon, is the leader in the show is called Roxanne. Uh, in the comics, it was Victoria. Mm-hmm. Uh, has removed one of her breasts. Um, I believe the Amazons did that so they could shoot arrows better. Right. At least that's what I remember from like Greek myths yes. or myths. Um, in the show, Roxanne wow. says it was to yeah. prove their strength. Uh, regardless, uh, that's what this is. So happy that we're getting this group of characters. The beginning of the episode, we see Nora really struggling with kind of the indoctrinating of them and her daughter Mm -hmm. talking about how horrible men were obviously they just lost her husband and her son um but you get the sense that she doesn't really have a choice and knowing where she ended up in episode one in my opinion you kind of saw i saw this coming a little Mm -hmm. bit that she would end up being a part of this group And we do see her kind of going over to the dark side. Um, She is very much against sending away that group of um, like wanderers with the younger daughter. That was an interesting shot, too, where uh, they were talking and suddenly all the cans on strings started jingling like a early warning system in a Peter Pan movie. (laughs) And Mm -hmm. everyone started pulling guns out of ovens and throwing shopping carts in front and jumping up on the roof to... Take pot shots, keep them at bay. Yes, you're telling me there's no ring doorbells in all of the Costco that they're hiding out on. Because those things just run on like double Yeah, that's a good point. You know how many batteries that have been in there? That's a good point. But this is a better system because they're the Amazons, which I believe are the equivalent of the Lost Boys, no? 
Oh, no, no, oh, they're I, warriors. Was, the Lost Boys. Are... I was watching a whole different show. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we get uh, a little bit more um, after that. She sees how brutal this group can mm-hmm. be, and she tries to get on the good side of the leader, Roxanne. And Roxanne's just like, hey, listen, cut the bullshit. Yeah. If you want to be here, you have to be a part of us. So she ends up taking a small role in what they call the funeral, and we'll get to that in a mm-hmm. minute. Um, and then she actually watches a pretty brutal uh Gang jumping yeah, beat of one of the women. Again, we'll, we'll, we'll get to that as well. But Nora's really starting to buy she's it. She's always been the political figure that will figure out how to get on the right side of whatever group she's in at the moment. So, yeah, we were yeah. saying this last episode too. She knows how to play yeah. the game. Um, she knows her role and she knows how to play yeah. the game. So I'm not surprised to see that she is starting to kind of fit in there. We have um, Hero also in this uh, next world. And Hero is kind of giving up or or showing her cards a bit to this group after the scene where she's taking a bath and obviously very uncomfortable with all the nudity around her, or at least that's the sense we get. And the other women are very genuine and and nice to her and kind of pointing out these little intricacies about Hero's character, which I think break her down a little bit. She well, then later that was goes very on. much oh. a cult indoctrination, it felt like, where they all kind of surround her and start saying things like, don't you want to not stop feeling tired? And and mm-hmm. uh, whoever, what was it, whoever you were before, you don't have to carry that with you. And it really felt just like, listen, this is a good place to be. Let's all drink some Kool-Aid and go to the starship. Yeah, and it, and it clearly works because later in the episode, yeah. Hero divulges the information that she killed uh i believe his name was mike uh the the man that she was right. sleeping with who was married before all of the the men with y chromosomes were killed so clearly could have gotten away with that but she decides to come clean to who the leader of the cult <laughs> right. so yep. not probably not the smartest idea not that there's going to be much that can happen yeah. to her in this society but even admitting to something like that means that you're truly kind of open to the idea of being a part yeah. of it well that is that guilt and of then, not being not like getting away with murder and nobody knowing and nobody caring you're like i should be punished for this but well that's why she was also taking pills for fun when she found testosterone for sam earlier just trying to numb everything mm-hmm. which i thought might become an ongoing storyline but i think they kind of wrapped that up already in this episode with her kind of coming clean, letting her conscious uh, open, and I don't, I don't think there's going to be a whole drug addict storyline like I thought there might have been up front. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the first episode we get introduced to her, she's kind of in an AA meeting. Right. Maybe it was a drug, um, uh, like a narcotics. Drug anonymous. Yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly. Uh, so yeah, it, it would it would appear that this kind of scares her straight, or maybe. You know, she she accepts this into her life and therefore can let go of right. the drugs. Um, so we'll see how that works. And then also Hero um, is kind of the main focus of this funeral, which turns out to be um, one of the women letting go of her past life and becoming, uh, I think she wanted to be named yes. Athena uh, moving forward. So they are kind of letting go of their past, almost a baptism into this new Literally world. a baptism. Uh, it was a dunking. Right under yeah. the water, yeah, and uh, and that's where Nora kind of just follows along with what the rest of the group is doing to show that she is interested in being a part. I of I did this. like when she dumped this... the dirt on the body and then kind of like made eye contact, like, "Look, I'm doing it." <laughs> right. Yeah. It, very yes, deliberately. I'm, very deliberately. I'm also part of this. Yeah. yeah, and and we know that Sam is extraordinarily uncomfortable with what's going on. But you see Hero sticks it out and she waits through the whole thing. So, yeah, I would I would anticipate us going down this route, which I guess it's not a spoiler anymore, um, is kind of where we meet Hero right. uh, for the second time. We get a couple panels with her in the first comic, but she does fully become part of the Amazon, Daughters of the Amazon. And um, I I would be very interested to see if the story continues to follow that way. It did take uh, six episodes to get us to a point that is like a page in the comic. But it makes more sense. We have to set it up. And um, if, you know, you want to take this much time with York and 355 and 
Jennifer Brown and the Pentagon and all this stuff, you need to give something to Hero. Yeah. Um, so slowly seeing her come become a part of it rather than just flashing forward and her being it also makes her feel more personable and we can relate with her a little more rather than in the comic where we meet her after all of this as an evil villain like running around with this group, cult group of amazons if you want to call it a cult but we we already right. meet her as the opposition in the books whereas here we get to see how she got to that point so that's also yeah. interesting uh, and then really all we have left to talk about is poor Sam. Uh, so Sam, it sounds like Sam has some meds that can keep him going, uh, a little testosterone. Um, so he, he's safer from that front. However, um, he's got to deal with the Amazons. You can tell that, yeah, you can tell that dangers all around him in a number of senses. First, um, the women were not particularly accepting of him in the first place outside of Roxanne who kind of overruled them and said he's going to be a part of us, uh, to one of the women named Kelsey. Right. Uh, goes up to him and hits yeah. on him a little bit. Uh, whispers in his ear that there's going to be an event later and it's a funeral, which ends up being that kind of that baptism. Symbolic funeral, yeah. um, But he is uncomfortable, leaves the room. She quickly follows and is seen just kind of whispering to him which is verboten uh, by another one of the amazon yeah. yep and uh asked to be seen outside where three other women just start beating her up which nora uh, witnesses and true to form decides to fit in with the group and backs out yep doesn't doesn't help nope. doesn't try to stop it doesn't even appear to have an issue with it, really. It's just kind of like, oh, that's what's happening in that room. Let's go check out another room. <laughs> well, there was also, uh, towards the end there, well, throughout the episode, we had the Kimber show down in uh, Washington, D.C., where she's just running around the Pentagon, stirring things up with everyone and really making stuff muddy for everyone involved, trying to get her own uh, power back. We see her talking to Regina Oliver at the memorial in front of all the men, the pictures of the men, and kind of, like Regina says, I can't believe it's President Brown, but she's invincible. And Kimber says, well, what if she's not? And I guess that set off the whole get her involved in the hunt for 355. And then there's the mm -hmm. moment where she approaches Christine, who I'm still not sure if she's honestly trying to help her or not, or if this is still for her own benefit. But she's basically trying to talk her out of an abortion and saying that she would take the child and raise it if Christine didn't want it. Yeah, and it's not that it's not that she's not trying to help Christine in I think right. little moments, but it's definitely a, a part of her plan right. for sure. Um she obviously lost her four sons, three right. sons um with this, so maybe she does want to I'm sure she raise, does. I'm sure she does. Uh, a yes. child but at the same time, you know she's going to use this as a, one of the cards in the deck when she needs something or wants something. So, um, yeah, I don't yeah. trust her <laughs> at all. But, yeah, I mean, Weens, what did you think of this episode? If you give me a, a ranking 1 through 10 and then and then tell me how you're feeling about well, the show. Well, I think the show is on an upward slope from last week, which was already on an upward slope from the first few uh, episodes. Uh it's getting better as it goes along. I think it was off to a rough start, and now it's really starting to move along and get kind of interesting. But like you said, this is where the book picked up, so this is where all the action is going to really begin. We already know all mm -hmm. the players, or at least most of the players, and they can actually start interacting with each other. So that'll be... I think that'll make for an exciting last couple episodes, definitely season finale, leading into hopefully a season two. Yeah, I, I agree. I would say that this was probably the strongest episode so far of the season um and it likely is just because we finally have a grasp on who all these characters mm -hmm. are and their motivations yeah. and now we're actually seeing it pay out um so i would say you know seven five maybe eight for the episode um but again i'm in total alignment with you where it started yeah. really slow and uh, i was actually quite worried for the show but i i think if it continues on this trajectory um it'll be this will end spot. up being i feel a great show once it's all said and done that people will say you got to get through the first three or four episodes and it gets really good. Right. Because <laughs> that happens to yeah, so many shows where you're like, just watch four or five episodes and then it's amazing. So Yeah, I think of Game of Thrones. I mean, one of the best shows yeah. of all time. And 
it's a it's really a struggle to just be able to understand what's going on yeah. in these first three episodes. Sure, there's like some exciting moments in parts, but like there's so many characters that you're yeah. like, what the hell is and going on? And I had read the books prior to watching and was still pausing, asking my roommate, wait, who was that? <laughs> 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 Which one? They all look the same. That's okay, awesome. Anyway, back on top. All right, well, thanks everyone for joining. Waynes, what do you got going on? Well, uh, this coming weekend, Friday, Saturday, New York Comic Con, I'll be wandering around, going to some panels, seeing some art, and uh, just having a great time. So if you're down there, come on over, say hi. I've got a bunch of stickers to give out, so those are fun. And uh, hey, Sean, guess what? What's that? We got a brand new Splash Page t-shirt. All right. <laughs> so that's fun. Cool, yeah. yeah. Uh, we're working on merch, as many YouTubers do. So once we uh, once we have something set up, we'll let you guys know. We'll yeah. obviously put the links below. Uh, and look forward to you know seeing uh, who wants the splash page T-shirt yeah. or some other creative T-shirts because it won't just be our logo. <laughs> <laughs> so so thanks everyone for watching. We're hoping that you're enjoying Why the Last Man as much as we are, and that you're following along. Um, if you have any questions, if you have any specific uh, thoughts about the show that you want us to cover or any topics that you want us to dive into let us know down in the comics we're happy to do it yeah i'm sean that's andrew take it easy youtube all right